to. Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I rise on behalf of Labour in this third reading to uh, express our support for the bill. We have uh, uh, found that the select committee process to be uh, constructive and uh, we're supporting this bill because we share the government's view that uh, this is a long overdue modernisation uh, of the uh, legislative framework for road user charges. Uh, they are a, a, a critically important part of our transport system and a source of revenue for, uh, for our roading and, and uh, other transport infrastructure. So uh, uh, we support this bill, and, um, but I want to use uh, my uh, time, sir, in this debate to just really uh, reiterate some of the concerns that Labor uh, uh, still has about aspects of the bill that we don't believe have been um, uh, adequately addressed, concerns that were raised by many submitters uh, during um, the select committee process. The purpose of this Act, uh, as uh, the Minister has said, is to, um, to modernise and simplify um, the road user charges system to improve um, compliance and, uh, and recovery of road use charges and to establish a framework uh, for electronic management of road user charges. There has been, uh, sir, throughout this process, um, the assertion that, that, that there is significant amounts of evasion uh, uh, that goes on with road use charges. I'm not aware of any hard evidence that's been uh, presented uh, by the government to substantiate the claim that there is evasion. Um, so we're being asked to uh, take that as read. Um, the bill gives effect to the government's decisions arising from the recommendations of the independent review of the New Zealand road user charging system. And students of politics listening to this debate will remember that that independent review uh, was a result of the, the trucking uh, strike, if you like, um, that was uh, sparked by an attempt by the uh, previous Labor government uh, and under Annette King's uh, stewardship as the Minister of Transport at the time to uh, update the system for road user charges. So it has a, um, an interesting provenance. Um, I don't think there's any, uh, any difference or, or dissent over the need to, to modernise, uh, uh, to bring the system of road user charges up to date with, with new electronic um, technologies, um, nor is there any um, uh, dissent from our side, sir, about the need for a consistent um, statutory framework. That is uh, all well and good. But I want to um, comment briefly uh, about the two objections that, um, that uh, remain on the table um, from our point of view. The first is, is uh, I think it's in part two of the, of the bill, and, and it's probably our most fundamental concern, and that is the shift from nominated weights um, to gross weights. As I, as I uh, said before, we don't believe that the case has been made, that, that hard evidence has been put on the table by the government to show that the, the, uh, that the current system of nominated weights where people will, a truck driver will, uh, or, or a firm will um, fill out the forms for uh, their road user charges based on the actual weights, an estimation of the actual weights the, the vehicle will be carrying. We don't believe that there's been, uh, the case has been proved that that system is, is, is performing badly or that there is significant uh, evasion. Many sectors in the industry uh, are disgruntled, sir. They don't feel that they've been consulted properly uh, about this change. They feel they've been kept in the dark over these changes and the impacts they will have. And, and as we heard in the, during the committee stages, Quite a number of submitters actually um, gave uh, testimony that the impact of the, the shift to gross weights, to the, um, the, the maximum potential laden weight of the vehicle, will result in, a, in substantial increases in road user charges. Uh, and uh, as we know, in our transport sector, there are many, many small businesses and small firms 
uh, who believe um, that under these changes they will be adversely affected. So we, we think that there should have been much more analysis and consultation and it's a shame that that didn't happen. Um, there were a few bodies within the, uh, within the industry who um, supported the change, but uh, by no means uh, was that view representative of the, um, of the transport fleet as a whole. Um, the, the impression that we were left with was that the existing system overall, uh, in terms of the use of um, nominated weights, uh, was felt to be working um, quite well. Um, the, another uh, factor that was raised, sir, that we, that we think is worth noting is that um, there will be a considerable need to, um, to refit uh, many uh, trucks in the existing fleet and certification costs uh, faced by uh, operators to comply with the new system. So, you know, this, make no mistake about it, this change will impose very significant costs on uh, small businesses who will be particularly vulnerable to it uh, in our transport um, fleet. There will be, we believe, less flexibility um, within uh, truck fleets than is currently provided for with the nominated weights system. Um, uh, with smaller trucks on the road as operators seek to reduce um, the gross weights and arguably that could increase roading congestion and carbon emissions. Having flexibility within the current system of nominated weights uh, could mean that the national fleet is actually more efficient and better able to deal with changing loads. Now I know that the, one of the intents behind the change is to, is to incentivise more efficiency so you've got uh, vehicles uh, carrying uh, uh, loads that are closer to their capacity the whole time, but um, there are also some uh, negative, uh, possibly unintended consequences of that as well. We, we, um, we heard at the Select Committee, sir, a case study presented by one operator um, that revealed an additional average cost of $18,000 per vehicle per annum and a total projected cost to the firm of $137,000 uh, um, per year. Um, that's obviously a, a very large firm, but still that's a, that's a, a, a substantial um, cost to be borne. Um, one of the groups who, who, who feel that they'll be particularly badly hit, um, Mr Speaker, is the New Zealand Motor Caravan Association. Um, they have about uh, 22,000 paid-up members or, and some 40-odd thousand individuals who are associated with that organisation. These are people who travel the country in, in um, motor caravans and um, they uh, reported, and I know the Minister challenged some of these figures in the committee stages, but they reported increases of up to 270% that would be a result of, uh, and they, and I've, since, I've subsequently spoken to the Motor Caravans Association. They stand by their figures, um, and and uh, and they feel that that will because the very nature of motor motor caravans is that they are often large vehicles that are almost never um, loaded up to their to their carrying capacity. The other um, concern that we wanted to just note at this stage, sir, um, uh, acknowledging that we are in support and voting for uh, this bill. Um, for the broad reasons outlined. Um, but the second point that we, that we think is worth noting is that uh, one of the features of this bill is that, um, uh, as, as the Minister said, that much of the practical detail um, will be covered off by regulations and, uh, and um, uh, we think the balance is not quite right, sir, to be um, but passing legislation uh, that so much of its um, uh, force and intent is actually going to be delivered by regulations. And, and a number of submitters made the point that they felt that it broke the, break, the basic democratic principle that there shouldn't be taxation without representation. And uh, no final numbers were available uh, uh, for, for proper scrutiny before the bill um, uh, proceeded this far, sir. And the actual charges and, and uh, are going to be dealt with uh, by officials through the process of, of making regulations. The risk, one of the risks is that this will be a complicated process and open to legal challenge. So I uh, look forward to hearing the rest of the contributions. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr. Speaker. David Bennett.